Hello, hello. Yes, it's Sir David the Bard and the Cockroach. This video, if I don't get something in my PayPal, I think I will never do any more videos again. This is a video I've been thinking about for 12, 13 years. This is going to be what comes around, goes around video. I may make that my title. I started doing these videos 10, 11, 12 years ago. And I did my first one right out there on the balcony. And I had in my hand a Christmas card. Now, no one sends me a Christmas card. I had to go get it from somebody else. I'm pretty hated in the family, if you know what I'm saying. And after this video, you'll see why. The hatred is well placed. I had a Christmas card. And on the Christmas card, it had a picture of a family. A husband, a wife, and several children. What's wrong with that? That's an appropriate Christmas card. Why would the cockroach and why would the, uh, the bard you know, be upset with that? Well, it was my first video. And I did the video and I started these videos for therapy. I felt better talking to you guys than I did to regular therapists. And I needed a voice. It's only fair that we all have voices that we can say what's on our mind, our fears, our uh, hopes, our dreams, our aspirations. Of course, we all need somebody to talk to. Well, nobody wanted to listen to me, and they all wanted $150 an hour to listen to me. Well, I talked to my AI, and she said, I speak around 10 to 12,000 words an hour. So that's a lot of therapy. So I held that card up and I looked at it. And there were several members of uh, my family that would say, um, people divorce you because um, you've been married six times. And I thought to myself, that's not the facts. If you look at the facts, I divorced five of my wives. None of them divorced me. I've always said to my wives, uh, if you can find somebody better, better looking, which they could in an instant now. Someone skinnier, which they could. Someone smarter, which they could. Go for it. I don't care if you divorce my ass. I could care less. I can find somebody else. I've never found uh, a problem finding mental patients that I marry. So anyway, it's, it's a large group that I can uh, attract in my uh, net uh, to marry me. So the reason I was upset looking at this Christmas card. It's because it was my ex-wife, Jeannie, and her new husband, the alcoholic. Now, I divorced Jeannie. That was one of my longest marriages, 18 years. Now, I've been married now to Mercy for 18 years, and I'm going to surpass. Mercy's going to end up being my duration longest wife. So I'm looking and I'm seeing my ex-wife and I have to be fair. I have to be fair. I cannot just be prejudicial and, and uh, uh, skew my ideas. Jeannie was sharp. Uh, she's a beautiful girl. She's a really, she was a cheerleader in uh, Oklahoma and she used to tell me, never call me a cheerleader. I was the head cheerleader. <laughs> and they're the ones that go, ready? And they would start. And 
she said the, the starting word, ready. Beautiful girl, beautiful young lady, and um, extremely uh, uh, talented, and uh, a return missionary. She went on a mission uh, to uh, uh, Disneyland. Uh, uh, why can't I think of it? Buena Park, California? Anyway, I was looking at this Christmas card and I got more and more angry. And I'm not one to, to get really emotional one way or the other too much. Uh, I don't get angry where I slam doors, throw stuff. I just divorce your ass <laughs> and I sue you. That's my forte. Anyway, I saw my wife, which I divorced, and her alcoholic friend and their children were implied that that was their family, that was their children. Well, it wasn't. They were my children. My penis made those children, not his. Anyway, anyway. I'm looking at that and thinking, this is the typical Mormon way. Uh, Mormons love to deceive people. Mormons uh, love to imply. Uh, they shun. They um, are underhanded, under the table, behind your back, uh, stab you in the back. Anyway, I started thinking when I was doing my video camera out there, how I felt. How I felt. And, you know, men, we don't have a lot of emotion. A lot of our emotion is anger or aggression. Testosterone doesn't make us um, uh, really uh, sensitive, kind, empathetic people. We have to work at that. That's not uh, our forte. That's not the way our bodies are created. So, I looked at this um, picture and on the bottom of it it said the Randall family. <laughs> now I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm sorry but that pissed me off. Uh, it wasn't the Randall family, it was the Crossette family. My kids and two other people who basically he wasn't related to any of them. The mother, yeah she it was her children. Anyway, I thought it was deceptive. I thought it was a kick in the nuts. I thought it was uh, behind my back. Uh, they never sent me one. I had to go to another family member and I happened to see it. The other family member said, hey, look what happened. You know, your kids are in this family portrait portrayed as the Randall family. I just happened to see the, uh, the card. I think it was at my mother's house before she died. So I, caught, I took the card, brought it home, and I was sitting on the balcony and looking at it, and I thought, well, nobody speaks for me. Everybody sides with the woman. Everybody thinks uh, she divorced me. Everybody thinks uh, I didn't want my kids. Everybody thought, well, you know, he's, he's a bad dad. Now, I could be. I'm not debating that. There were many bad decisions that I made, but I was never an alcoholic. I was never a drug addict. Uh, I never uh, beat anybody up. I never been arrested. Uh, I got two driving tickets in my whole life. I've never had any other kind of issues. Um, I've never been uh, accused of anything. I, I've run day care centers and residential treatment centers. No one has ever said that I was abusive or I had uh, domestic violence or threatening people. None of that. So, was I a bad person? Maybe in their mind I was. But anyway, I got this idea, and you got to be careful dealing with uh, bipolar people. We get a lot of ideas. Uh, they're not always good. 
<laughs> and if we act on them, we do go to jail. <laughs> I've learned uh, I can think whatever I want, but I need to uh, stay in my own house, shut my mouth, obey the law, and uh, try to act like the other monkeys so I can be accepted in the monkey population. So I thought, well, I never got to say anything uh, about the divorce to the family. Uh, somehow families all get together and uh, they, the women and some of the men will, you know, uh, gossip and say, oh, he was a terrible father. Oh, did he smoke? No, no. Did he drink? No. Did he hit you? No, no, no. None of that. I was, you know, I guess an average kind of a guy, bipolar. I sometimes um, said things and did things that were, you know, mentally ill, but they never uh, hurt anybody. They never sent anybody to the hospital or those kinds of things. So, anyway, I thought, well, I should have a right to tell my side of the story. That's all I wanted. I didn't want to hurt anybody. I have no uh, ulterior motives. I have no, uh, I'm going to get her because uh, she divorced me. I divorced her. There, there was nothing to get. But she was deceptive. She was a Mormon. She, um, deceived my family, made me look bad. Am I looking for revenge now? No, I'm not looking for revenge. I'm looking for you to put a little money in that PayPal. No, no, I'm not. If you like my story, put a dollar in the PayPal. If you don't like it, <laughs> sue me. I'm judgment proof. Anyway, um, I did a video. And that was the first video of Sir David the Bard. Now I've done, oh, I'm, I'm getting up to uh, 2,000 uh, videos, not, not quite that much yet, probably uh, 1,600 or something. You can look it up. I, I don't even know how to look it up. I just have people tell me. And I told my side of the story. And I felt better. I felt like uh, I'd been to therapy. I feel felt like the camera, listened to me, didn't interrupt me, I love that part, and uh, appeared to be uh, vigilant, listening to me, not like a counselor who goes to sleep. That'll be $280 and I've been asleep for an hour. Well, be that as it may. I then began to think about how the Mormon Church has treated me for 55, 58 years. And that started to say, I started to say, gee, I need to tell my side of the story. They have their side of the story, and many of my family uh, won't talk to me. They shun me. Um, part of this video is you're going to see why they shun me, especially the females. But here's my side of the story. When I divorced Jeannie, uh, I was living with my mom because I was um, applying for Social Security Disability uh, and uh, to get Social Security Disability you can't work for a whole year. If you're really disabled uh, you need to have no income and uh, I had none. So at the time just before I started living with my mom, Jeannie and I got uh, in a situation to be divorced, talking about it and planning. And so we owned a double wide uh, trailer, yeah, I'm, I'm trailer trash. Now I've admitted it, I'm, I'm trailer trash. I lived in trailers when I was going to BYU. I couldn't afford to live in an apartment. I, I lived in a trailer and I had my wife and my babies living in a trailer. In Provo, Utah. Well, we were living in a trailer uh, in California, a double wide, and of course, being a bipolar, I put like my brother Randy, but it was legal and it was uh, code uh, a patio, a covered patio, which made another two bedrooms because I had so many kids, I needed to have 
deep a big room. And so I happened to go, I got the newspaper, got my little clothes and lunch, and I went to Colorado uh, to actually visit um, a girl, that I, a mental patient that I married, Sandra. Anyway, I was at Sandra's uh, uh, condo in Colorado, and I thought, gee, I'm, I'm going to read uh, my newspaper, uh, the Ventura Star Free Press from California that I brought with me. And I thought, okay, so I'm reading the paper, and suddenly I go, well, I'm take a look at the want ads. So I'm always interested in how much my trailer is worth if I ever had to bail out and use it for, for food money. So I'm looking in the want, uh, the want ads, and of course you young people these days, good Lord, you don't even know what a newspaper is. Uh, you know, I'm not in touch with the tech world that much, but back in the old days we had papers that opened up and the ads were in the paper. And I'm looking and I see these mobile homes that I'm always checking, uh, how much they're worth, and I go, that address looks very familiar. That mobile home is exactly like mine. That mobile home has the same floor plan and the same address, and it's in the same town. I thought, God, I'm in the twilight zone. There must be two mobile homes that are exactly like mine. I never like to accuse anybody. I, I'm kind of, not so much in my old age, but in my young age, I was very naive. I thought everybody uh, didn't lie, they didn't cheat, they didn't steal, and they wouldn't betray me, uh, they wouldn't stab me in the back, they wouldn't uh, be out to get me. That's the way I was. Uh, I thought everybody else uh, would behave and, and have those characteristics. Well, I found out my, my ex-wife, Jeannie, wasn't that way. She was vindictive. She was vicious. She was betraying me. It was my trailer. My home. For sale. She was selling our home out from under me. Should I be upset about that? Or, hey, hey. That's just, that's just what people do. If they're, if they're gonna get a divorce, they just sell the house, keep the money, and run away to Oklahoma. And I thought, well, I'm not happy with that either. I'm just not really happy that uh, a wife of 18 years, uh, she adopted a good thing she did. I wanna balance it. She's not all bad. She adopted five of my children from another marriage and raise them. That was a good thing. That was a good thing, and uh, I compliment her. She, well, she was a good mom. She was a good mom. And um, taking on somebody else's five children, that's usually, I would say, an exceptional person. So, I'm saying, this isn't fair. She is selling my home out from under me. And the Christmas card, I didn't think that was fair. Now here's, <laughs> here's why you're going to put a dollar in my PayPal. I know you are. <laughs> this is why I believe there's a God. There's a lot of evidence in this world that there isn't, but I know there must be a God. When we got divorced, <laughs> she took everything. She took everything. I ended up living with my mom. I couldn't work because I was a bipolar, disabled. I, I, I quit every job after eight months a year. I couldn't work. And she took <laughs> everything in the house. She took most of my clothes. She took uh, the money from the trailer and um, she took 
the kids to Oklahoma, uh, and I'll bring that up. I, uh, it's the only case I ever lost in court. It was the only case. I've been to court several times, and I've lost that one case. And I'll make a video on that and how I did it. I, I lost. The judge ruled against the cricket. So, when she was moving to Oklahoma, I guess she found some uh, personal papers of mine, and she, I don't know, maybe she got kind that day, and she put all of this personal papers, birth certificate, passport, um, patriarchal blessings, etc., in this little square box. And she, she didn't bring it over and hand it to me and say, uh, gee, I'm really sorry. I'm effing you and taking all of your stuff and your children and ruining your life. You divorced my ass. This is the effing you get for the effing you got. Famous phrase. She takes the box and she throws it on my mother's doorstep. Now, for a sweet, beautiful cheerleader, return missionary, and a wonderful mother, uh, I didn't think that was appropriate. And I thought, well, uh, you know, she's upset. Uh, she's going to marry in Oklahoma her alcoholic friend, who now is dead, by the way, who died of cirrhosis of the liver. Um, <clears throat> so I got this little box, and I'm sitting in my mom's house, and I'm going through it, and there's some important papers, and finally uh, I get everything out. You, you hear my computers all the time <laughs> trying to keep me alive. They're saying, screw you, screw you. Anyway, I'm looking in this box, I take all the papers out of it, and lo and behold, God appears to me. Yeah, I'm a little Joseph Smith. They weren't gold plates in the bottom of the box. <laughs> You're going to die. <clears throat> You're going to die. I wish I did. Anyway, back in the old days, you young people, we didn't have cell phones where you could take pictures of yourself. We never did. We ne never took pictures of ourselves. And we, uh, a long story short, we had Polaroid cameras, old, old cameras. And they were the first cameras that you could take a picture of somebody or something, and it would come out of the camera, and it would be a picture. Well, lo and behold, there were about seven or eight naked pictures of Jeannie in the bottom of my <laughs> little suitcase. And I thought to myself a couple of things. Because I'm naive. I'm naive. I'm, I was pretty innocent back in my younger days. And I thought, well, did she leave these in the box to show me the rest of my life what I'm not going to get anymore? <laughs> Maybe that was her motivation. And I got thinking, well, did she just get upset? Didn't look in the box? put my shit in the box and threw it on my mom's porch and I thought <clears throat> that probably is more the uh, the truth of the uh, the situation now <laughs> you're gonna kill me please put a dollar <laughs> if you're a man if you're a man watching this video please put a dollar in my PayPal because I want you to know there are ways uh, that we can speak that uh, we have uh, a right to tell our side of the damn story. These wives are not all perfect that uh, divorced us. So, I, I gather the pictures up. Now, they weren't pictures <laughs> of her sitting on the couch and me taking a picture of her boobs. That, that wasn't the pictures. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, please, put two dollars in my PayPal. <laughs> they were her, I have to be careful because this is a, a new world. I'm not going to use any slang. 
um, I'm going to use the medical term, her vagina. Vagina. That's the medical term, and that's a legal term. This is a medical tape. <laughs> this it, it is a, a, a aspiring gynecologist saying vagina. Anyway, <clears throat> seven pictures of her vagina. Now, if I was her and somebody said those were my pictures, I'd lie. Well, the bar don't lie. The, bar, the cockroach would go, yeah, they're my pictures. Anyway, if I was the monkeys uh, that, uh, not you guys that are watching this, but the general monkeys in the world, uh, the first thing they would go, that's not my vagina. Now, he took a picture off the internet and back in those days. We couldn't even do that. But that's not my vagina. Well, here's, again, there is a God. Um, Jeannie was dressing the kids up uh, Halloween one year and she fell down and she broke this finger, this inside finger here. This is the finger I wish she broke, but she broke this side of the finger. And it never healed properly. It was always a, a crippled kind of a finger that, you know, you could identify very quickly. I guess I, I do know there's a God. So her finger I want to be, I don't want to be uh, kind. I, I really don't want to be, I really would like to be revengeful, but it's just not my nature. Her finger was in all of the pictures of her vagina. Now, if she took me to court and goes, that was a uh, porn and he spread it. These days, you can get in trouble, I think, doing some of those things and put it on the internet. I never put it on the internet. But if she went to court and went to the jury, I would simply say, well, that's her vagina, and uh, that would be evidence, and I would present the evidence, and she could get on the stand and go, it's not my vagina, it's not my vagina. But, well, could you show the jury your finger? And she would show her finger. I said, jury, do you see that finger uh, between the lips there? <laughs> I'll put three dollars. <laughs> Damn, you guys, give me a break here. Tell me, this is funny shit. Three dollars in my PayPal. So I don't think she wanted to uh, take me to court. And there was no reason to take me to court. Now, here's what I did. Oh, God. I said to myself, hmm, there is a God. I have pictures of a very mean girl. Back in those days, we didn't call them mean girls. Uh, we called them bitches, but now they're just mean girls. Anyway, um, I said, well, I should maybe do the right thing. Uh, and, you know, when you're divorced and you have naked pictures of your wife's vagina with her broken finger in it and can prove it's her finger, what's the right thing to do? So, she was uh, um, in the Relief Society presidency in the, uh, I can't remember what ward we were in, but anyway, she was kind of uh, a return missionary and kind of powerful uh, with a high prestige in the Mormon church because of her mission and she was in the Relief Society presidency which is the women's organization that takes, uh, you have a lot of power if you're a woman in that. And I thought, well, the right thing to do is to write her. Back in those days we didn't have the computer so I wrote her and uh, her new husband in Oklahoma. And I said, Jeannie, I have um, seven or eight uh, naked pictures of your vagina with your broken finger separating the lips, and I just wondered if you wanted me to send them to you. <laughs> Don't bully the bard. Don't bully the bard. I hate bullies. Don't sell my trailer when I don't even know it's for sale. 
don't put my children up as his children. They're not. So, she writes back to me. <laughs> There's no naked pictures. You don't have any naked pictures. No, don't send any naked pictures. I don't have... See, when you tell Mormons the truth, uh, they believe the truth. They don't believe the facts. <laughs> they, they have their own truth. And uh, she's a uh, died in the wool, a uh, Mormon, and so is her husband, uh, the dead cirrhosis of the liver guy, who put her in bankruptcy. They went bankrupt. Anyway, um, she denied that the pictures even existed. And um, I thought to myself, well, I know the truth, the facts, and she again is going behind my back pretending she is somebody that she's not. She had to have a special um, interviews to go on her mission because uh, of her behavior in high school with Bo, the football player. Well, uh, I'm forgiving, you know, the girls I marry don't have to be virgins. Anyway, I said, okay, she's denying this, and I look like a horse's ass to everybody that she's talking to. He doesn't have any naked pictures. He's just trying to get even. I wish that I could get even somehow, but I'm never going to get even. She took my kids away from me. So in those days, we had, I think we still have a, a fed federal uh, FedEx um, copy centers. So <laughs> put four dollars. <laughs> you men, when you hear these techniques, if this is not worth four dollars to you, I don't know what it would be. So I go to FedEx in the middle of the night because I knew what I was going to do and I didn't want a whole bunch of people, children, whatever, around. And I had um, a special FedEx machine. I don't remember how much it cost, but <laughs> I made a poster at FedEx of the best vagina picture that she had. And, you know, I'm not real picky. Well, yeah, I am kind of picky, but I took the best one. And I blew it up, and I think it was three by three. I think it was a, a, a yard by a yard. And um, I know you're laughing. Uh, I'm laughing inside. I held that up and I said, hmm, what should I do with this three by three picture of her, I'm going to stay clean, her vagina? And I thought, I think I'll send it to her husband. <laughs> Nothing he hasn't seen. It's not on the internet. It's not, uh, what do they call it, revenge porn? It doesn't meet that scrutiny level at all. It's in the family. She's seen her vagina. He's seen her vagina. I've seen my wife's vagina, her vagina. And I didn't send it to my children. I should have posted it on my wall where I used to have my sign, Sir David the Bard. I should have put her vagina, there's five dollars, there's five dollars for PayPal. Anyway, <clears throat> I folded it up. I sent it to Oklahoma to her husband. Now I love it uh, when I do my antics, I guess I would call them antics. Because people go silent. The monkey population goes, God dang, we've never had anything like this. Because I'm pretty creative. Uh, I don't know how many of you uh, out there uh, watching this would do this or would even think of this. So, it went quiet for a while. <laughs> then I got a phone call. No, not from Jeannie. 
No, not from, uh, what was his name? I can't even remember his name now. I didn't get it from anybody except my Mormon state president. That's the, the powerful Mormon in uh, Mormon uh, theology in the community. Yeah, you have a bishop uh, who's kind of over you, and the state president is over nine wards, used to be nine, uh, in the church. So he's, he's the big boy. And he said to me, and I, I love this, I still use it today, David, could you come in? We need to have a little chat. Now, I've learned now that that's not a good word. Back then, I was naive. I thought, God, maybe they're promoting me to the prophet of the Mormon church. I'm such a good person. You know, I'm going to be little Joseph Smith. <clears throat> I have to keep clearing my throat. I'm sorry. I'm old. My container's wearing out. But hopefully you can hear me and understand what I'm saying. So, I take uh, my body, my container, down to the ward house and go in and here's the state president sitting in the office and beside him is my bishop. Mormons, judge. Bishop is a judge in Israel. He lays brick for a living or he drives a truck or he's a landscaper, but he has been promoted in the, the Mormon uh, uh, theology to the level of a judge that makes bishops feel important. Anyway, that's how they get your money. They call you fancy names and you give them money. 550 now in PayPal. So, <clears throat> I said, yes, President, uh, what would you like to, to see me about? And basically what he did is he sat me down and he started uh, talking to me and he says we have a problem now I'm used to hearing that sentence Houston we have a problem or David we have a problem and I'm looking at my bishop and he's looking at the shoes his shoes he is so embarrassed he is so uncomfortable he couldn't even look up and uh, look me in the face and the bishop, <laughs> this is why they never go to court on stuff like this. They never go to court because the bishop had the evidence. <laughs> I had sent some of the Polaroid pictures with my poster picture. Well, he had some of the Polaroid pictures. Now, <clears throat> now I'm feeling victorious. I, I don't know why. And the state president says, do you see what he has? And I said, yeah, I've seen it for 18 years. You guys have only seen it for a month. Not bad. It ain't the best, but it ain't bad. <laughs> so the bishop holds it up and he turns away. But he's had them all month. So he's been looking at them in the bedroom. He's going, man, anyway. The state president says, we have uh, a um, notice from Oklahoma. The uh, Mormon church in Oklahoma doesn't think this is appropriate, and neither do we. And I said, well, she tried to sell my trailer without me knowing. She um, put my children on a Christmas card saying they were her husband's children. And uh, she took everything I owned except these pictures. Um, I don't think that was fair. That's not the point. The point is that. Do you think that's appropriate for a priesthood holder to do? Yeah. Don't ask rhetorical questions to the cockroach or the bard. Both of them are assholes. They're stereophonic assholes. So he says, we have to do something about this. And I thought to myself, other than you guys looking at them, <laughs> other than passing them back and forth between the Mormon church in Oklahoma and in California. So he said, you're in trouble. I said, 
okay? I was born in trouble, sir. You're going to be punished. And I said, well, if we go to a high council court where there's 12 other men that are going to make a um, decision on excommunicating me, I'm going to bring my evidence. <laughs> Six dollars. Six dollars into the PayPal. He goes, hmm, okay, we're not going to excommunicate you because that would involve 13 or 14 other men sitting around the table passing her picture around going, is this really her? I go, yeah, it is. I'm testifying. That is the picture. They didn't want to do that. So he said, I want your temple recommend. Okay, I'll take it out. I give it to you. You can't use it until we get this totally fixed. Okay, so that was my punishment. That was my punishment. Huh? They didn't want to excommunicate me because they didn't want me bringing the evidence to the trial. And uh, did I have them all by the short hair? You decide. You decide. Uh, let PayPal decide. I, I love the, the screw with you guys with my PayPal. I really do. I, I, I do. It's fun for me. And make sure you hit the subscribe button because YouTube will pay me more money if, or, or some money. They've never paid me a dime yet. But hit the subscribe button. So if you like my story, if you like the, uh, the genie vagina <laughs> story, um, Good. I'm glad I entertained you. Now, there's going to be some of you females that will never look at me again. You'll see this video and you go, he is a total asshole. Uh, and you could be right. You could be exactly right. But you know what? I never am the instigator. Never have I ever instigated shit. It's always the monkeys throwing shit through the cages at me. And I've had to either dodge the shit or try to show it uh, back at him, throw it back at him. I've never been an instigator. But I've always been a person who hates bullies. I think she and her husband were bullying me. And I don't want to be bullied. Don't bully me. And don't bully other people that I can see that you're bullying because I will go to bat for them. It's my nature. It's part of the creature that I am. That life should be fair. And I know the monkey world, you all say uh, life isn't fair. And you're right. Life isn't fair. But life should be fair. Everybody should have um, a voice. Everybody has a right to their opinion and all the opinions are not going to be uh, together. They're going to be uh, oppositional, opposing each other in some cases. But uh, don't hold yourself out and me hold myself out as holier than thou. More intelligent, more powerful. You're my slave. You're my subservient. I'm over you. If you don't do what I want you to do, I'm going to take your money. I'm going to take your security, your self-esteem. Don't screw with me like that. I don't like it. Anyway, if you're a man and you think this video is funny, hit me with the PayPal. If you're a woman <laughs> and you go, he is a total asshole, you can reach into my PayPal and pull out six bucks. Anyway. This is my video for part of today. Uh, it's the genie vagina. The bard and the cockroach is done for the day.